Hey guys, thanks for joining me for another Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia video. And today we are going to take a look at Beatrix. So Beatrix just got her C90. Um, she isn't like crazily changed from her previous version, so she operates pretty much the same. So if you're already familiar with Beatrix, you kind of already know the good stuff that she does. She just works a little bit better now. Um, but we'll go through a full character guide for anyone that's maybe new to Beatrix, picking her up for the first time. Um, I do think she... I have found a lot of uses for Beatrix, and I think she does come in clutch for a lot of difficult content and like orbs that have specific requirements but some of the harder lufenia fights are ones where like bosses have really nasty buffs and uh, beatrix acts as a very very good debuffer and she also has follow-ups which will help keep the damage flowing as well and then she also has some very good party protection in her kit as well so i think beatrix especially for like a brand new player she has a lot to offer as someone that can really help you in a lot of ways so um, we'll go ahead, we'll take a look at her artifacts, we'll do her spheres, and then we'll do a little guide click. So, her artifacts, um, pretty basic. You want 3 attack 108, and then continence minus boost 2 star. Um, that raises the party's attack and defense by 5% while the noble loyalty is active. Noble loyalty is a buff that you pretty much want to always keep active, so we'll, we'll talk about that when we get into the showcase. Um, you could also do max brave 330 as another option if you can't get both of those. Um, and then we're going to go into the spheres here. So for the spheres, um, I think she does have a lot of choices that you can run on her. It just depends on what you want to do. So for the A sphere, attack and brave damage is probably your top choice, but max brave is also decent for her as well. So it just depends on what you want to do. Um, a couple I'll show off here. Well, and I, I didn't put either of these on, but let's go into Final Fantasy VII here. Um, so Aerith, if you really love Beatrix and want to make her look good, like Aerith, I think is probably one of the better ones. Um, magic attack by 15% while your HP is above 80%. So Beatrix, it, people might not realize it because she wields a sword, but um, she actually has magic damage. So um, uh, Aerith could work really, really good there. I'm probably going to save Aerith for someone else. Um, I might put it on like, um, I'll have to look, but like later when Terra gets her BT+, plus, I might put it on Terra because Terra is like one of my favorite characters. We'll see. Um, but that's a decent one. And then Sephiroth is also decent. Um, this is, so this is raises max brave and attack by 10%. If, as long as you have 50% or more HP at the start of the last wave. So Sephiroth is also a very good one. If I had refined versions of either of those, I would probably put those on. <clears throat> I just went with something generic. So I put SIDS on there. So, um, as long as she has max HP, uh, she gets brave and brave damage up. So just something to help her with. So whether it's brave, brave damage attack, any boost to that is going to be fine for her. Um, for the V-Spheres, um, a lot of them might have to do with, like, being targeted, so don't give her any of, like, the lock spheres. Um, Gabronth and Celis are two pretty decent ones. So I went with Gabronth. I kind of liked this one. Um, whenever she does a crit, it reduces party's brave damage taken. So I kind of liked that. And then we can look at Celis really quick, because that's another one I think could be decent. Uh, let me just find it here. Celis, Celis. Oh, I passed it. Um, Celis is one that... I'll probably save because I think I do have a full. Oh, do I? Oh, I got to be on D. What am I thinking? I'm like looking in the wrong sphere. So let's go to Celis here. Beatrix, I actually I like right now I have Beatrix on. Um, oh, sorry. I should be looking at B sphere. What am I doing? Okay. B sphere for Celis. Here we go. So <clears throat> this one increases brave by 40% of imp brave after using ability if you do the maxed one. So it's really good for brave gain. So if you want to do Brave Gain, go with Celis. Otherwise, I think Gabronth is a pretty decent one. Um, otherwise, just look at it and see what you have. Just make sure it's something that you feel like she can use well. Okay, so then for the D slot. So Beatrix is really built on having buffs on the party. Like a lot of her stuff depends on having party having a lot of buffs. Um, so Wakas could work on her. Um, she naturally can't get Wakas, but as long as you have at least one other buff coming from the party then you could use Waka. So Waka, I think, could be a decent one to put on there. Otherwise, for the D sphere, just pick any, like, party sphere that does attack. So I have Be I put Beatrix's own on hers. Um, when she deals a crit, raises the party's max break by, by 5%. That's decent, but for, like, a party buff, you would rather do attack or brave damage. So Beatrix is one where, like, I just put it on her when I got it. Um, because back in the day, my general rule was if I really like the character, I just put their own sphere on themselves because I typically thought that would be the best one. But that's not always the case. So hers isn't like the worst sphere, like Max Brave is fine. But in today's game, you're really looking at attack and brave damage. Um, so you would probably put something else on there. But 
I'm kind of locked into it because I don't have any slot removers and I don't want to waste that refined sphere, right? So, all right, so let's go ahead. We'll hop into a showcase. Um, I am doing Edgar's intersecting wheels again. Um, this fight kind of got fed up with me, kind of stomping it in all these showcases actually <laughs> almost killed me on my Fang showcase. Um, I didn't want to re-record it. I was basically at the end, so I left myself almost dying in the video. That's fine. You guys can laugh at me in those comments, okay? <laughs> All right, so let's hop in here with Beatrix. Um, so <clears throat> she's got a few really fun things going on in her kit. So th the big thing is is um, she does have some debuffs to put on the enemies, which you want to be aware of. And then she also does a lot of buffing. So we'll kind of go through um, step by step here. Um, so Garnet, yep, just do Garnet stuff. Okay, and the big buff that you want to look at is like the Noble Loyalty buff. That one's pretty important. So let's go ahead and let's just do this. Got to make Beatrix look good here. Okay, and then we're going to do this here. All right, so Beatrix 15 CP is Saint Cloth. We'll, we'll look at that maybe right away, but like Saint, Saint Cloth is a button you almost never want to press. Um, it's not very, it's not, it doesn't feel good to press. It's basically a simple battery and then it gives two buffs, but the buffs are just like defense up and HP regen. So like, yeah, if the HP regen is important to you, like maybe reapply that once in a while, but for the most part, um, you don't really need to worry about that. So what's really cool about Beatrix now, though, is she starts off with Klim Hazard. Um, it's going to either have a plus or a plus plus version based on the amount of buffs. You can see our team is loaded with a ton of buffs. I think you have to have like 12 or more buffs um, to have Klim Hazard plus plus. The plus plus, basically the more pluses is just the more damage it's going to do. So I always would lead with the EX. So we're going to throw this down. Um, the EX does like one very, very important thing. So you can see throwing a lot of damage and then she's got follow-ups that come with it. Okay. So the follow-ups come from a couple of things. So she's got, we'll, we'll look here. We'll let the enemies go here really quick. Yep. Do that there. Okay. <laughs> so she's got a buff and a debuff. So let me just go on the enemy here. Okay. <laughs> um, so the enemies, when they have this Rose Petal debuff, anytime Beatrix attacks them, she will get the follow-ups. And then the party has the Noble Loyalty, okay? Um, anytime a member with Noble Loyalty is attacked, the follow-ups will happen as well. The follow-ups are really good because they are defense ignoring. So the damage always feels good on them. And then... Um, they will do one debuff on the enemy. So they'll they'll wipe off one of the enemy's buffs every time it happens, which is very, very good. So that's a very, very nice follow-up to have. Um, we're going to go and swap turns back to Beatrix so we can get her back up. Now, the other thing that Klim Hazard does and why it's really awesome that we start with it, one is, is it used to take a really long time to ramp up the first one. Um, once, it's, once you have it, it ramps up a lot quicker. Um, but what we're going to get with Beatrix is this. We're going to get Holy Knight Safeguard, which is really, really good. So um, you, you kind of want to time this correctly. I'll use it right away. Normally, I wouldn't use it here. But when you use it, she's going to get a free turn. Okay. And then she's going to get a... Uh, we'll look at her here. We're going to get the Holy Knight Safeguard buff. Now, in the past, how this would work is when you did the attack, it did not give her a free turn. And it was only a one-turn buff. And so basically, as long as Beatrix has this buff up, the party can't take HP damage, which is really good, right? So a common strategy people will do is you will get Holy Knight Safeguard up and then either run effects that would delay Beatrix in some way or run units that will like turn steal or turn manipulate to keep Beatrix not attacking. But what's really nice with Beatrix, if you can keep her kind of in the background, one is, is you can keep the safeguard up and then your your party's basically invincible at that point. And then you can just sit there and let the rose petals kind of go off uh, while she's sitting there while the other two party members are doing stuff. So if you do like Aphmau Reigns Beatrix, you could do that. Or you could do like Rem with some other character in Beatrix. And then you could keep pulling the other character up, let Beatrix sit back and let the Holy Knight Safeguard go, you know, do its thing, right? All right, so we got our free turn with that right away. Um, so we'll go ahead and do Thunder Slash next. Um, so this is what puts the Noble Loyalty buff on. So you want to make sure that you are just refreshing that when you need to. Um, it's 
for like her regular attacks, it's like her main damaging attack you're going to be using the most often. Um, but Beatrix isn't like a crazy high damage character. What makes her so good is her debuffing of the enemies. Or not debuffing, but like cleansing their buffs, however you want to word that, but gets rid of enemy buffs. Um, and then her Holy Knight safeguard, I think, is really good. And then having the follow-ups. Like, that's kind of where she gets her utility is like having all that stuff there, right? So let's just swap back to Beatrix again. So we're doing this the opposite because this is a showcase, right? Normally you would want to swap in the other character and let Beatrix sit back, but I just want to kind of show off Beatrix's kit here, right? Okay. So the next thing we'll do is we'll show off Shock. So Shock is really good because it is a basically an enemy buff wipe. It will completely wipe everything out on the enemies. Um, it applies the Rose Petal debuff to the enemy, so then um, Beatrix will get those follow-ups as she's attacking them, right? Which is really good. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. Um, and I'm trying to see if there's anything else I'm missing on that. I think that's it. I mean, it does imperil for Thunder as well, which is nice. You know, you'll have that as well. Um, but that's basically it. And then you just want to upkeep the buffs. You want to upkeep the Rose Petal debuff. You want to upkeep the Noble Loyalty so that you basically have the Rose Petals counter going. Um, and then basically you're just managing up until you get the EX attack. You're kind of just using whatever skills kind of feel good to you at the time. Once again, I usually don't use the uh, Saints Cloth. We'll use it now just so you guys can see it for the showcase. Um, so sure, we've got the EX up again though. So you can see once we got that first one... And the fact that she starts with that is super powerful. But let's use Saint Cloth since we haven't. So you can see because we have Garnet, we can't really tell that there's battery. But yes, there's battery. But you can see the attack is fairly weak. But we do get the Rose Petals follow-up. So, I mean, 300k with the follow-up is okay. But her primary role is not damage dealing, right? So let's swap again. <laughs> Go back in the Beatrix. I mean, pairing her with a Turnsteel is actually kind of fun. Because in this situation, you can see the enemies we're about to attack. Um, we can get Klim Hazard off. I guess Klim Hazard isn't going to put the... Um, it'll allow us to get to the HP attack we want for the Holy Knight Safeguard, but it won't apply it immediately. But with, with this type of shenanigans with the swapping, you can plan it out where like, okay, I need to pull Beatrix up because I got to get Holy Knight Safeguard on quick before the enemies do their thing. Um, and then you can also use the turn manipulation to pull other characters in front of Beatrix to keep the you know that buff going longer, right? So... I think Rem and Beatrix is kind of like a really nice pairing. And then you could pair with a third character that you like. But I do see them actually working quite well together. Just because the turn manipulation is going to give you more control. And having more control is always a good thing, right? Sure, well, let's do Rem's EX here just because I haven't done that in a while. Oh, and actually, I don't even have Rem's follow-ups because I just let that fall off. But we're not looking at Rem, right? We're looking at Beatrix. But yeah, I mean, that's basically Beatrix in a nutshell. And you see here with the enemies attacking... We can see that we're getting follow-ups from Beatrix and getting Siphons here from Rem. So, like, once again, more reason why they're actually pairing pretty well together. Like, yeah, you can see Rose Petals going off. Very, very nice. <laughs> like, this team, actually, that I have right now, this build, like, every character has follow-ups in some way. So, it's actually probably a pretty turn-efficient team. The, this team, though, is lacking, like, a main damage dealer. Um, I mean, Garnet does a lot of damage, but, like, none of these units are, like, the big million damage characters. I mean, except if we want to throw off <laughs> Rem's LD here, but let's do a swap turns. Let's just get one more turn with Beatrix here. So, see here, I can swap in the Beatrix, right? So, yeah, we should actually show this off. Let's do this because, um, so I've got Beatrix up, right? So, let's do, let's actually play the smart. So, let's use Holy Knight Safeguard so you guys can see, like, the damage mitigation here. So we'll do that. So we've got Holy Knight Safeguard up. So now what we're going to do is we're going to play slow with Beatrix. So we're just going to do a move to do one. So let's just put Thunder Slash on. Refresh our Noli Holy Knight's Guard, right? Get the follow-up, okay? All right, so now Rem's going to come up here. And what's going to happen is... Oh, shoot, we're actually doing weakness damage, so the orb isn't ticking down. Okay, um... So I want the orb to tick down. So what I'm going to do is let's do, I don't know, let's do a cure here. Yeah, okay, there we go. Perfect. So, and then we're not getting follow-ups. Yeah, I actually want the orb to go. But you see Holy Knight Safeguard is up. So let's just do this. We'll let him pop the orb. Yep, and then you should see here, it should be like, yeah, no damage. See that? We actually, he actually had a couple of misses, but you saw no HP damage there. So that's what the safeguard does. And as long as Beatrix is sitting in the back, um, you're basically protected. So anyways, guys, that's Beatrix in a nutshell. Let me know what you think. I think she is a very good utility type character. 
I think she's a very good like slot three character on a team. Uh, pair her with another like support unit and a damage dealer, and I think you're good to go. So anyways, uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you all in the next one.